So you can see I'm not in my normal room here. Obviously, this is the Peach Guitars, well, the old Peach Guitars YouTube recording room. And they very kindly uh, let me come down here today to use this room and to try out some guitars. So I recently sold the Two Rock Bloomfield Drive. And uh, well, you know, the cash came in. It's not going to stay safe for long. Um, burning a hole in my pocket. So what am I after? Well, I came here today actually to look at something a little bit outlandish. And that is the Jimi Hendrix SG, the Gibson Jimi Hendrix SG. Uh, it's a guitar that's intrigued me for ages. Um, now what I'm gonna do, I haven't played a lot of SGs for years. I actually used to have one years ago, um, an Epiphone one. So I'm gonna try a load of the SGs that are in the shop. We've got the 61 SG, which is basically the 61 Les Paul. And then we've got some 64 in interesting colors, Pelham Blue, TV Gold, and we're gonna try the Hendrix next to those. And who knows, I might walk out with one of them, I might not. It's all about how it feels, how it plays. Um, I brought along uh, some equipment. I've got my Rift amp. Um, I've got a pedal board that I probably won't use. I brought it for the tuner, basically. But yeah, let's dive into these guitars and see what they're like. Okay guys, I'm gonna flick back and forth between me at Peach and me here at home. This is a few days later. And I wanna just say a few things. What's going to unfold in this video is like, some sort of guitar fever dream. I went there to buy one thing and something else happened. Now, I'm not gonna tell you everything up front, but it's gonna unravel as we go through. What you're gonna see at the beginning is a bunch of SGs. I wanted to try them all out. So you're gonna get clips of three or four different ones and we'll end with the Jimi Hendrix one and I'm gonna to talk to you about that at that time. I wanna just quickly butt in here and just say something because this is going to, this video is going to potentially look a little bit extravagant, but I've, you know, waited for that time where I can go out to a guitar shop like this with so many options and be able to buy something or a few things that I really, really love. And uh, let me just, you know, fill you in on a couple of honest ways that I've done that. I've sold the Two Rock Bloomfield Drive um, I've been able to downsize our car, so we have a we had a Tesla Model X for the last four years, and now the kids are going to go off to uni, and they don't like sitting in the car for long journeys because they're quite tall. <laughs> uh, they're you know six foot three and a half, both of them twins, and so we've downsized to a Golf R, which is an epic performance Golf that I enjoy, but it costs less than half, way less than half of a Tesla Model X to run that. And so I'm able to put that money into the guitar side of things. And uh, so, you know, just being very honest, what you see me spend in this video is mostly cash. And then I've been able to take out some free credit that the money I've saved on the Tesla will go into that to pay that off while it's free for the next nine months or whatever. And that's just an honest look at the, the way I am. You know, I, I haven't got endless money despite what it looks like. Lots of things in here I've bought where I've paid 75% cash and got some free credit for the rest of it. And that's just the way I do it anyway because I don't want to tie all my cash up at all times. And building this collection has obviously taken a lot of capital. At the same time, I've been trying to invest in cryptocurrency and my pension and business and all sorts of stuff. You know, that's just a little insight into the way that I have to work these things because I get that question more commonly than any other. You know, how do I afford all this stuff? I afford it through some diligent use of free credit when I can, and otherwise, you know, I've sold off bits, I'm gonna be selling a couple more bits. Anyway, let's get into the exciting stuff, but I wanted to go there first. We're gonna start with this Pelham Blue SG, and I'm gonna tell you what I think about it.
Okay, so firstly, why am I looking at SGs? Well, not only do I think they look really cool, they come in some cool colours, but there's something about them I like, which is they have a brightness and a sort of lightness of tone that the Les Paul doesn't. The Les Paul has a lot more low end. Now, while that can give you more options, my style is developing over time to the point where probably half of what I play is quite overdriven with a lot of those sort of harmonics and saturation that I enjoy from the amps that I use. And the way that I like to play with my fingers means that sometimes a Les Paul uh, offers me too much low end when I'm sort of plucking away at bass strings whilst playing stuff on the higher strings. I also like the savage response that SGs have in that treble. It can really be impactful when used sort of occasionally and in the right way. Now that's something I'm working towards obviously and I'm still a bit of a sledgehammer uh, but over time I'm hoping to hone myself down to a sort of better player, better tool as it were. So yeah, SGs are really cool uh, for that reason and um, also you know we're all trying to develop a style, not just a playing style, but like everything we do with ourselves, the artistry, the creativity, it's all encapsulated in the stuff we choose. And if we're trying to portray ourselves to the world, you've got to be careful about what you choose, you know? I like the vintage looking bits of gear and that suits the sort of expression that I want to make. So there you go. Right. Okay, let me talk about this Pelham Blue SG. I straight away knew that it wouldn't be the guitar for me. It wasn't as lively as I was hoping. Uh, I love the colour, it's very cool. But on the other hand, I've seen quite a few people using this sort of colour recently. So again, I was thinking, maybe I want to just make a different statement. And uh, it just wasn't as lively in the top end and it was a bit sort of flatter in the bottom end than some of the other guitars I'm going to try in a minute. So now we're gonna, so that was a 64 SG with that lovely sort of vibrola arm, I guess it is. Um, now we're going to look at a 61 SG, which was basically the Les Paul design of those few years, 61 to 63, and it's got a more classic look to it. quite a wide neck but it's thinner at the back more flat sort of c-shape as opposed to the sort of bigger baseball bat already by playing the other ones i want the the whammy bar that i can use whereas this is more of a sort of showpiece and all together it just feels like an older style and there's something really funky about the gold and the blue ones i'm going to play the gold one again but like sort of whittling it down now I haven't mentioned the gold one much yet, but I played that in the opening, in the introduction, and I had played that before the Pelham Blue. Now I'm gonna play it again in a second here. You can already tell where I'm going, what direction I'm going. This gold guitar, not only did the look suddenly inspire me, it sounds different to the others, and you know how like, if you have three people and three guitars, you know, you can just think two of them are, are you're nowhere near what you want and they don't sound great and the other one is just for you. And the other two people will do the same but with the other guitars. You know, that's what this is like. Someone would walk in and play the red one or the Pelham Blue or whatever and just instantly get a feeling and a spark. I'm not here to say that, you know, one of these three guitars is just better than the other because for someone else it might not be. But this sort of journey towards finding your guitars, your instruments, is very personal and I always try and ex you know I'm trying to explain the nuances of that as I go along but hopefully you'll see in my playing that it sort of inspired me um, yeah really uh, this gold one 
you're gonna see as it as this video unfolds that it's a it becomes a bit of a sticking point for me. <laughs> So I immediately gelled with that gold one. Um, the, the neck pickup had the more fluty, but also, frankly, strat sounding thing going on. A little bit more expressive for me than the blue one. Both of them have lovely, slightly thicker necks. The red one has a much thinner neck. And uh, the Vibrola system adds quite a lot of weight to the guitar, but actually it helps it to stop being heavy in one direction. So it's quite well balanced. Um, and as I was playing them, I thought, I've always loved the look of a cherry red SG, that's what I had when I was younger, but I was looking for something a bit new and a bit different for me. Um, I'm going to close the chapter on those three SGs just for a minute, because what I really came here for was the next guitar. Let's see what that was. This is the Hendrix. Let's hear how vibrant it is.
So I want to show you, you know, how authentically sort of what it's like on one of these guitar shopping trips. You know, you probably felt it yourself. You're trying to play, uh, but you're also trying to figure out the instrument. So you don't, you're not playing in the way you maybe normally would. I'm trying to hit the guitar in different ways. And you sort of feel after about two minutes whether that guitar is for you or not. With this Hendrix guitar, it's really unusual. You know, it has a different tone from all the other straps. It also has the weight of uh, expectation and pressure. You're playing a Jimi Hendrix entitled guitar, which means, I guess, two things is either you better be pretty bloody good at playing like Jimi Hendrix, or you're happy to, to, to play in your own style, but whilst, you know, using something identifiable, you know, that's the thing about signature instruments. And as I'm sitting here playing this guitar, I realize that even if it was the best SG out of the lot for me, I'm not sure I want to have Jimi Hendrix's name weighing down on my shoulders when I play this thing. You know, my plan going forward is to start playing live at some point when I'm ready. Um, I've got to go on stage as me, you know, and I think hopefully you can relate to that. It's not, even if it's a covers band, like you still want to have your own thing. And I'm definitely also not good enough uh, to want to think that I can put Jimi Hendrix type guitar, you know, <laughs> over my shoulders and go out there and rock it, you know. That's not what it's about. So I'm sitting here thinking it was cool to come along and play this thing, but ultimately, A, I played the gold SG first, which for me is an SG that I would want more in terms of what it sounds like. And B, suddenly I realized I don't want this guitar. It's as simple as that. I don't love playing it. And the idea of it, I feel like it's a collector's guitar. It would be, I wouldn't really even think of leaving the house with it anyway. Um, you know, it's it's a couple of grand more than the gold one, but that's the couple of grand that shifts it from being, okay, I'm personally comfortable with taking out a custom shop Gibson. Okay, I'm, per okay, I'm personally comfortable with taking out a custom shop Gibson to I'm not comfortable necessarily taking out this price and level of guitar and like if you ruin that Hendrix one at all maybe a lot of the value goes whatever but anyway saying that it was a completely different playing experience so that's a good thing and a bad thing it's a good thing if you want this Jimi Hendrix signature it's a bad thing if you want an SG that plays as you so that's what I discovered and that's why ultimately it's a really interesting thing um, and I think it's for particular cases to buy it so yeah, very cool idea and something really unusual. And they did make it different from the other SGs, whether you like the sound of it or not, it's got a more Hendrixy vibe to it. Um, yeah, and that's that. So what happened next? Well, at this point, I wasn't really sure what to do. I'd said to the guy helping me at the shop, look, I think I want to buy that gold SG. It's so cool. But I've got a bit of room left in the budget to maybe buy something else too. So can I try some things? Let's see what I tried out. 